Welcome to Mindset Transformations Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Do you feel the need to do more with your life? Are limiting beliefs holding you back from true success? Enjoy a unique blend of interviews, discussions, and transformation coaching in every show. Get the tools for success. The Mindset Transformation Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. And we are very excited to have our guest here. Now, it's exactly, I have always wondered why some people are able to transform darkness into light. How some people at taping times can transform what should break them into something that actually builds them. Do you know somebody who, when faced with the good times, transformed that into his or her strength? We all do. And sometimes we are the ones who are able to transform darkness into light. Trouble into victory, suffering into strength. That's our topic today. And to help us understand this amazing subject, I invited a woman who has done it all. She's a writer, a wife, a mother, a life coach, a businesswoman. She's a fighter. She's Coach Myrna Young. Myrna, good morning. Good morning, Dan. I am so happy to be on your show. You know, we have history. Thank we had her. So <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Let's just adjust the microphone. Jay, Jay, Myrna, Jay is in the studio in Miami helping us. Jay, if we have to adjust Myrna's microphone, can you just let, let us know? She's going to let us know. Good, okay, everything is good, she said. Myrna, good morning, honey. How is the weather there? Where are you? <laughs> I'm in Fort Myers, and the weather is great. Um, probably the same kind of weather in Brazil, right? Oh, no, it's cold here. It's in the 50s. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. Oh, my <laughs> no, God. It's I even in have the a cold. 90s here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that Brazil had the same weather as Guyana, which is where I'm from. And, uh, you know, we are, you know, close to the equator, and it's always hot. It's never cold. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, in the, in, in, in the north of Brazil, it's actually hot all the time. But in the okay. south, where I am right now, by Argentina, Okay. It's actually quite cold. Okay. But honey, I'm very excited for you. To, um, thank you for saying yes to my invitation. Thank you for sharing with us everything you're going to be sharing. So you're as welcome. you know, our subject, our topic is how to transform and how to use the winds from my storm to elevate us higher. So tell us a little bit about your story. Um, well, um, uh, as far as my backstory. I was born um, very poor in Guyana, which is South America, so we're kind of neighbors. Um, and um, you know, my you know my mom and my grandmother were both um, domestic servants, and it's really interesting. But I just um, I was meditating because I always started my story um, from my childhood and um, the fact that I was a victim of of child abuse, uh, you know, from a neighbor. Um, and um, uh, uh, when in, you know, going to um, Canada and becoming a very successful entrepreneur and winning the um, uh, you know, Entrepreneurship of the award, Year Award. And then I transitioned my story to um, wanting to become an American citizen and the fight that I had to um, go through to achieve that goal. But, you know, God put in my heart that becoming an American citizen is how I can have generational increase for my kids. Um, my mom traveled to Canada to get generational increase for her kids, and that was my journey. And um, and after I achieved that goal, and I fought very hard for that, it took me like 10 years to do, um, and after I achieved that goal, then uh, God concentrated on uh, my purpose, and my purpose was to give hope and encouragement to you know, um, uh, women that with similar backgrounds to me, women that ha who had to um, fight, you know, all their lives to um, uh, for their children and for themselves and to elevate themselves higher. But um, I was, you know, I was uh, meditating on that story just a few days ago, and all of a sudden I realized that, you know, I'm starting the story because the catalyst of who we are today didn't start with me. I was just um, the recipient of that. So yesterday, 
I called my mom and, um, uh, and, and got the background story because I realized that it started with my aunt. And what she told me, because, you know, um, uh, you know coming from Ghana, most of the women did domestic servants um, because back then, um, in, in the 60s and 70s or so, um, uh, you know, Guyana had um, a lot of people come in, actually the Canadians come in, and they always wanted, um, uh, you know, the whites always wanted people to clean their houses. So um, apparently Canada had a program where they were recruiting um, domestic servants, um, and you had to be, you had to be um, single. So my aunt applied, got the, got the job, went over to Canada, um, cleaned houses for a year, um, then got her landed immigrant status, and sent for my mom, who sent for her three kids, and, and, and that's basically how it started, is, is seeing a way out of, um, uh, of your situation and not, you know, accepting the status quo. So, so that's my story. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful... It, it, it's, it's so interesting, it's so special, Myrna, when we honor yes. where we came from. Yes. And when we honor who we are, there is no way, to, I don't see a way to honor who you are if you don't honor where you came from and your yep. story. Yeah. And thank you, thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. When you look, sometimes, Marna, when, because the reality in the U.S. is very different from what we have in other countries, especially in a third world country like Yana or like Brazil. Uh, and when we think about child molestation, we think about something that we read in the books or we watch once in a while on a TV show, but we don't think, we don't see it as our reality. And that's very different when you, when you were born and we, when you were raised in countries that we were born and raised. Nowadays, how do you see, the, how, how, how do you, how, how, how how were you able to deal with the with the molestation you had as, as a young girl? Well, it's interesting, but you know, again, um, I do a lot of self reflection, and you know, I have my own radio program as well, the Minds of Transformation Radio Program, which you have been a fabulous guest on, and um, you. Uh, you know, I have never actually um, used my child molestation as a crutch. I think that it actually um, helped me in my youth to transition into um, a better person. Um, and, you know, I was interviewing my daughter-in-law um, two days ago um, on my radio program, and she is a social worker um, working with the youth. And basically what she teaches them is that trauma um, in your childhood, regardless of what it is, um, either has a positive in, impact on your life or has a negative impact on your life. But it, 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 it affects you um, in a certain way. And we all have to go back and, and look at that story and see how it affected us. If it affected you in a negative way, like if you're always playing the victim, then you have to change that trajectory. So um, in my case, um, there was a lot of positives that came out of that experience. Um, and, uh, you know, when I wrote my book, <laughs> one of the reviews on my book, because I wrote a book about it, um, Out of the Snares, and, um, and, and when I said that, one of my reviewers said that I am looking at it from a narcissistic point of view. Um, but, you <laughs> and she feels that, I know, she feels that um, uh, it, it had an effect on, 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 on some of the struggles I had in my life, but it all depends on your perception, and which is, which is also what you know I wanted to talk about today, and how, and which is the topic is is how the storm can can push you and elevate in your life. And you know, it's really interesting. I never saw that connection until now. To me, um, as far as my childhood, you know, I've had many storms and and many um, things in my adult life, but I never saw that. But you know, we can tap right back into there because. That storm elevated me as a young woman once I realized, because when it was happening to me, I thought it was natural. Um, uh, when I realized that it was not, 
it changed my whole perception and my whole perspective on who I wanted to be. And it was a positive. It, it, it was a positive influence in my life. Uh, it's very awkward because I, I never had anything like that happen to me. So when I think about it, I, I think it's something horrible, and it is horrible. <laughs> How yeah. can you say that was positive? Help me understand that, Marna. Well, um, okay. So you know, my sexual abuse started when I was about ten years old. And um, it was um, a family member that I called grandfather. Um, and we spent a lot of time together. Um, it was somebody that was elevated in our household because he was very rich. Um, so, you know, my mom allowed me to spend a lot of time with him and a lot of time with his grandparents. And I loved him. So I thought it was, it was quite natural. And I got a lot of, you know, a lot of perks from that relationship. You know, um, we were very poor and he was very rich. So I got a lot of perks from that. So that's one. The positive that I took out of that is that I always saw the world as abundant. I was never, I never looked at it as lack because I had abundance through him. The second thing is when I realized that it was wrong, um, I immediately felt that I was, um, I wanted respect. And, you know, when I went into my, um, uh, you know, relationships with boyfriends, um, respect was predominantly because I felt that somehow um, he took away my self-respect. So it became very, it became very important to me. And that means that I wouldn't allow my boyfriend to, you know, have sex with me until, you know, I felt that I had respect. You know, my first boyfriend, we didn't have sex until it was two years later. You know, things like that. Um, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that people were proud of me. So I lived my life, you know, have, wanting my, my family and my, you know, uh, my community to be proud of me because I, I had this big, dark secret. <laughs> so it, 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 it definitely, yeah, it, it, it changed my mindset, you know, my mindset shifted from, you know, the, 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 the girl that you would know um, that just went around with boyfriends and having sex and, you know, and uh, not conscious of um, maybe having babies or any of that stuff. It just changed, it just changed my whole mindset. I became um, focused on me being a self-respected person. <laughs> I understand because what really strikes me on, on, on your talk is that somehow you make fun of bad things that happen to you. And I, I do the, the very same thing. I, I laugh at the bad things that happened to me in the past. I respect them. I honor them. But I always make fun of them because in my mind, when I laugh, and I make fun of bad things that happens to me, I am able to overcome them. Because uh, even the dark, uh, the, the, I, was, I was thinking about it last night, and I wrote this, that my light actually comes from my darkness. And it's not the other way around. It is the difficult times that actually make me stronger. It's true. Uh, Marna, a lot of, we, we are all going through a lot of thinking lately with the government, with, uh, with the hope of what's going to happen, and this and that. And, and these are the times we have actually to, to come together to, to be positive and to think that the best is yet to come. We have, I don't know where you are, I don't know in Guyana, but in, here in Brazil where I am doing my tour, uh, we have this saying that in the past was the best time, and that's a big mistake. Right now, we are in, I have never been better in my life. <laughs> I am in the, in the best spot in my life. The world has never been better than it is right now, and the idea is only to grow. I do believe in God, and I believe God is growth. It's never going back. It's always going further, go, go, going, going ahead. Uh, how do you keep positive in a daily basis? 
Very good question, Dan. Um, I am a I don't know how I became a positive person. Again, I meditate every day and I reflect on certain things whenever I meditate and things come into my mind. But I was actually trying to trace recently when I became positive. But I am, and I'm not, I, I didn't get an answer, but I'm an extremely positive person. Every time um, I look at a negative situation that has come up in my life, I try to find the positive out of it. And the only time in my life is that I couldn't find a positive in a situation was when somebody that I was close to committed suicide. Um, and I wasn't quite sure how to, get, how to get the positive from that. But every single thing else, I look at it from um, what is the lesson, what am I going to learn, what is being birthed, you know, um, and one of the reasons I I took the I I, um, I picked the topic, how to use the winds of the storm to elevate your life, is because when the hurricane came through, and I saw the devastation first of the people in Houston, and, and then you know Florida, and then Maria in the Caribbean, I asked myself, what is the positive on that? You know, you know what what, what was the reason that you know, God created the storms. Um, and, I, and I came up with, with, with quite a few things, and it all depends on how you look at the situation. You know, we've got all kinds of, you know, little, little um, sayings, look at the glass half full instead of glass half empty. But, you know, mm-hmm. and I was listening to Joel Osteen the other day, and, um, and um, he had a message called When the Water Breaks. And, um, you know, he equated it to um, when a woman water breaks when she's becoming, when she's starting the labor, is because it's birthing something. And that is, that is exactly the way that we should look at everything. And, you know, God puts you through storms. God puts you through the fire. God puts you through challenges. And he's always putting you through them to birth something in you, even if it's confidence, even if it's courage, even if it's knowing that he is with you, because guess what? If you're alive today, you came through it. (laughs) You know what I mean? And, you know, old people used to say, trouble don't last always. And I have a lot of saying, the darkest part of the night is just before the dawn. And you have to tell yourself that, yeah, you're going to go through it, and you're going to come out the other side, and what is it going to birth in you? What is, you, what is going to, how are you going to come out the other way better than when you went in? And that's why I keep positive. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you. The one thing that I always think in that, you know, I'm going to have to face it anyhow. Or I do it with my head up, or I do it with my head down. But I want to have to go through it anyways. And I always think I would rather go through it with a positive attitude because at the end of the day, honey, I want to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be a winner, and yeah. I don't see a winner putting the head down and crying. No, a winner puts the head up and keeps running and fighting and fighting until the end, and that's how I see it. Thank you so much for sharing. But Myrna, as a life coach that you are, and when people come to you, and when they are facing this, like, all this wind and all this storm and going through so much, what's one of the first things, the first things you tell people to do? Well, I, um, like I said, I, no, I shouldn't say I said, but... I am a very positive person, and I believe in a law of attraction. I believe in energy. I believe in, you know, if you have dark energy, then you're going to attract dark energy. If you have Mm -hmm. positive energy and look at life from gratitude side. So, you know, when I I, um, started my show, the Mindset Transformation Radio Show, I mean, I don't remember how I chose that name, but, you know, as I look back on it again, you know, I, I, I live my life looking and, and listening to my higher self and, and getting instructions from my higher self. And a lot of times I just follow them. 
but you know again i was reflecting on that 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 um uh, that name recently and i realized that everything starts with the mind so you know i i just had a very new uh, a, a new client that came into coaching and you know this person has her phd but she's been beat up all her life and she came into coaching and she says you know myrna i have been fighting all my life um my gloves are tired uh, yeah my my gloves are tired i you know um and so you know help me and 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 in her first couple of sessions i had to change that mindset you know we looked at your beliefs we looked at you know what grounds you you know like the palm tree you know sways in the wind but it doesn't most of them don't break and that's because of the way they're built and how it's grounded so the first thing i tell my clients is you got to change the mindset because the only way the devil can beat you up is with your mindset and as i was um you know researching this topic um how to use the winds of the storm to elevate your life i looked at the eagle and you know the eagle welcomes the storm the eagle sits patiently or anticipating the storm because the eagle knows that the only way that he can elevate to certain heights is with the winds of the storm and way back i heard another speaker use the the analogy of um the airplane like the airplane can't elevate into the sky without pressure you know so pressure always pushes us you know the winds of the storm always pushes us and without that we can't reach new heights So the first thing that you got to do in order to win is you've got to change your mindset. You can't, you know, a crow um uh, stays on the ground and pick and pecks corn and the, the crow can never fly because he's a he's a bottom dweller, he's a bottom feeder. You you can't be a crow pecking, you've got to be an eagle and and fly. And um your mind is where you do that. You can win with your mind. You know, I haven't I haven't been able to master it, but you know, um there's a lot of coaches that teach that you can visualize where you want to be and actually walking it and it will come. That's, you know, that's the opposite end of of the mindset thing, but if you can't get there and I haven't I'm not that great of a visualizer, but what I can do is every day for about 15 minutes or so I you know I meditate and clear my mind and actually do um uh, concentrate on where I want to be and that's the only way to get it the only way to get it <laughs> it, 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 I, I well I am a big uh, visualization guy I visualize a lot I know you told me <laughs> Oh my goodness and some I can I can touch I can feel I can taste yeah and I I teach that in my classes I I make my students to stand up in front of everybody and tell and take us to their dreams yeah and what I look I, I and I use the I have a dream speech by Martin Luther King Jr. yeah because what he does the secret of his visualization in the beginning is to use imagery imagery are words that bring image in, image into your mind and it's a great we start practicing a uh, visualization is by talking about your dreams using very specific words and usually the word you have to add color and detail to your conversations and to your dreams and actually actually it works really it's not difficult when, when i get back home Myrna, i'm going to cook lunch for us or dinner and i'm going to teach you how to do that you're going to love it it's very easy well you know you 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 have to be people are very people are different some people are very visual people and you are one of them and some people are auditory i learn from listening and you know that's all i do i listen to tapes i read books and and um yeah the visualization part of it is a skill you know how long i've been trying to work on my third eye because one of the ways that you they said that you can bring anything in your life is by looking at it on a movie screen um through your third eye and i have been trying to open my third eye forever <laughs> and i'm just not 
And I ain't just not a bitch. I think about it. I was meditating last week. I've been taking some very cool classes in Brazil. Very, very, and I spent the last, uh, this past week, uh, Thursday, I took a class, a 12 hours class, mm -hmm. Friday, 10 hours, and Saturday, 10 hours class. Wow. It's been exhausting. And at one point that night, I was meditating, and I said, you know what, I want to open this damn third eye. I'm tired of this. So I was actually farting my forehead, thinking, okay, open it, open it, open yeah. it. It was so funny. Then I started Did laughing. Did you do it? I said, my gosh, I'm going to say Did you get no, it? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. So that's, what, you know, but the point is, is the great thing about it is that that's what they say. If you can open that third eye and see it, <clears throat> And, and, you know, that's basically how you, you bring it to you. But in the meantime, you can think about it and you can, and it's the same thing. It's, I love Abraham Hicks. And Abraham Hicks says that everything that you want is in your vortex. And, and I, you know, I say to myself, it's, it's, it's going to be eventually going to be available to me. Right, and and that's basically what you it, do. It, it, it's there. Somehow <laughs> yes. we got yes. we got to we got to find a way to open it. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I will. I have decided, honey. This is the year. I still have a couple months to go. I want to open this damn eye. I, uh, I need the third eye. <laughs> it's true. I even when and I bought. They're saying that you have these stones that help open it, um, the chrysalis and all that. I couldn't find one. When I was at one point in time, was going to try to find one of these things to hang it around my neck to help open that third eye. But yes, it's, we're making fun of it. But it's. I'm going to look for it in Brazil. You know, yeah, you probably can find it over there. No, if I find one of these here, I'm going to I'm going to ask some friend. And if I have one next, I'm going to get one for me and one for you. Yes, thank you. you. Yes, all right, awesome. <laughs> This is so exciting. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for listening to us. We are live. This is a very special connection today because I am in Brazil, live to our studios in Miami. Myrna is in Fort Myers, Florida. And our conversation here today is how to use the winds of storm to elevate us higher because we can. This episode of the Mindset Transformation Radio Show and Podcast is brought to you by My Helps Coaching and Consultant Services, LLC. Are you ready to change your limiting beliefs and experience an extraordinary quality of life? Or maybe you've already achieved some level of success, but you need that push to get you to the next level. To do this, you need a transformation coach, someone who will hold you accountable, see your blind spots, turn your weaknesses into strength, and help you manage your emotions. Whatever area in life you want to change, be it your career, your health, your business, or your relationships, coaching is one of the most strategic ways to get you from where you are today to where you want to be tomorrow. Coaching yields some of the highest personal returns because it is an investment in you. To help you get started, Coach Myrna is offering listeners a free strategy session. It has a $150 value, and you are getting it for free. To sign up, head over to www.blog.myhealth.us and click the free strategy session link. That web address again is www.blog.myhealth.us. We are live today from Brazil and now so from Fort Myers to our studios at PositiveStreamerRadio.com in Miami. Today my guest is the my friend, my colleague from University of Miami, Morning Coach Morning Young. We are talking about how to use the winds of storm to elevate us higher. Before the break, Morning and I we were talking, and I asked Morning how we can start the process of overcoming whatever we are going through. 
And she said it starts with the mindset. So, Marna, can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Sometimes I, I'm not sure if I, if we are all, it's so much technology going on that I get confused. Okay. Uh, honey, when you have to help somebody to change their mindset, where do we start? Well, um, uh, you start by, you know, what we were concentrating on the last time about visualizing. So um, you can either look at um, its perception, right? So, for instance, um, you know, let me give you my example of my, you know, my newest client. Um, you know, she just got her Ph.D. Um, three months ago, and she felt that because she has her Ph.D. now, that door should open, right? So what I, tell, what I told her is that, you know, God doesn't work on your time. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the work. And you can't say that, okay, I have been, um, I have my Ph.D. for three months now, and as soon as I get my Ph.D., every interview that I go into, people should hire me because now I have my Ph.D. No. Same with my radio. Right, exactly. Same with my radio program. I've had my radio program for over a year and a half, and it hasn't really brought me any kind of financial reward. So I can pack up. Or I can say to myself, I'm hearing people that have t taken them 10, 15 years before their radio program, you know, gets a million viewers or, you know, you, you have to put in the work. I mean, and everybody wants immediate success or they want immediate gravi gravita um, gravitation, you know, gratification, that's the word. But if yeah. you have the mindset, hey, I'm going to stick it out, I'm going to persevere, I'm going to do it as long as it takes you know, um, sooner or later, you are going to win. But a lot of people turn back because they're not willing to put in their work. They're not willing to hit that anvil, right? So, yes, that's the first thing that you've got to say. I am going to win, right? And regardless of how long it takes, I'm going to stick it out, and I'm going to win. And I am going to have a positive attitude while I'm doing that. You know, and I and you know, for instance, I said to this 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 um, person, she says to me, I said, what are some of the scriptures that ground you? And she came back with about four of them. And the first one, it was, it says, um, God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. And I says, well, if you really believe that God has plans to prosper you, why are you saying that your gloves are or um? tired and you're tired of fighting, if you actually believe that, you will know that, hey, you know, maybe I don't have to do it in my own strength, maybe I'm going to give it to God, but I'm going to stick it out because I know that God has plans to prosper me and I know that I'm going to win. Follow me? So, yeah, that's what we, that's what I concentrate on. I concentrate on changing that mindset, getting it positive, getting it hopeful, Get it, you know, being at the top and not being a bottom feeder. And then after we change that mindset, then we can work on a plan to get you where you want to be. But you can't do it if you change the mindset. And as you remember, when we were going through our coaching class at the University of Miami, they would always say oh, to you, <laughs> they would always, yeah, I mean, they would always say to you, and, and I couldn't understand it then, you don't tell your clients what to do. You let them, you, you facilitate them thinking. And that's the same thing because if we come into a coaching, a lot of people hire coaches to say, give me a plan. This is what I want you to do. But it's never going to work because they have to make the plan on their own and we have to help them and facilitate them. So, you know, when I go through that, she keeps saying, oh, you know, you're right, you're right, you're right. And then she changes the mindset on her own and then we can work on, you know, making the plans. But the mindset, like I said, it is so, so important. And this ownership, you are so right. The ownership that a lot of people have, that they do little and they want to have a gigantic result. Yeah. Yep. And it, it starts understanding it takes time. Yep. Do you think nowadays because technology has made us so like we want everything for yesterday or for right now, because everything is so fast, 
yeah. that we think we take that to our project in life. And people get very frustrated because it takes work and it takes time. Yeah. And another thing is sometimes we, we, we have the people on Internet that they become success from night to day or from day to night. And it's actually, it's not true most of times. It's These not. people who are successful from day to night as they have been working on their project sometimes for 10, yep. 15, 20 years. Yeah. And just now they become successful. But yep. and, 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 and I love to, start, to study and to read about people who won. And every time I do that, it's like you see how long it takes. Yep. I don't know about you, but I, ju I was just in the U.S. a couple weeks ago, I, I, and I was teaching a workshop in Portuguese in Miami. And, every, uh, and I, I did it in my house, and, and after everybody left, I was watching Netflix, and I was watching Lady Gaga documentary. Have you seen it? Uh, no, but she was successful at 25. You can't use her. <laughs> oh, no, 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 but it, 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 yes, you can, because go and watch her documentary. How long she has worked to be who she is. And even nowadays, how much pain she goes through every day to be able to perform. Mm. It shows the backstage of her performance at Bennett. Her, his name is something Bennett. Okay. He's a very famous singer, and she plays on, her, on his anniversary, on his birthday party in New York City. She spent over eight hours that day preparing herself, take, like going through exercise, taking a sleep, in, um, a painkiller mm -hmm. for her pain. Mm -hmm. She spent eight hours doing exercises to be able to perform for two, uh, for, I'm sorry, for seven minutes. Wow. Well, she's a perfectionist. So much, yeah. She's a perfectionist, she's a, and, and she is very, and she is very good at what she does. But, um, you know, I, you know, when I talk about somebody that, you know, um, it takes time, yeah, she probably maybe took 10 years or so if she got successful at 25, maybe she started at 15 or 16 or stuff like that. But, no, I haven't, I haven't heard her story, but, you know, um, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes it takes 30 years, you know. <laughs> it takes time, and, and, and if you never give up, you will always win. You would always win, even if you win when you're 80. <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. But you, you, you know, you, you no, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Everything takes time. But, yeah, um, you know, the only thing I know about Lady Gaga that I would use as inspiration is the fact that she risked it all. You know, I heard, you know, you probably heard about the documentary when, you know, she took all her money and um, and spent it on creating a fabulous show. And if the show wasn't successful, she would have been broke. And and that's because she believed in you know all those costumes, and she believes that in order to be successful, you've got to you have to have the show. And she risked it all. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. A lot of people are not willing to take risks. And that's another thing. You know, you've got to take the risks. One thing that yep. I admire her a lot, and, mm -hmm. after, and I did that after watching the documentary, so I invite mm -hmm. everybody who watch, to, who go to Netflix and watch her documentary, mm -hmm. you're going to realize how much pain, physical pain, she goes through every day mm -hmm. due to her condition, mm -hmm. and how long and how much she practices and she, how much exercise she goes through not only because she's a perfectionist, but because of the pain. And many times we think it's easy. And many times we think we're going to work a little bit and we're going to have a lot of success. No. These people who are having success for many, 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 many years, they keep working. They keep practicing. They keep pushing themselves almost sometimes to their limit so they can keep winning. Yeah. And we have to get rid of this feeling or this idea that winning is easy. It's not easy. No. It's difficult. No, it and even... Work. Right. It's and hard. It's hard. And you mentioned something a minute ago that I want to touch on. You mentioned about the overnight successes on the Internet. You can have yeah. overnight success, but do you know that how much money those people pay to do that? Most of them have a billion-dollar dollar advertising budget. 
because you can advertise and become, a, you know, um, become um, a, an international, a, a successful on the Internet, but you've got to spend it to do it. So if you're going to be doing it with organic traffic, as that's the new buzzword, um, it's going to take you years. But you can quicken it up by spending, some people spend $100,000 a month in Facebook um, in order to, to get clients or, you know, um, on Google um, AdWords or something like that. Yeah, if you spend the money, then um, you can, you, you, you know, you can buy um, success, but it's going to cost you. But you, but you can also build your success with, with you don't have to have that budget. You know, but it's going to take I know time. A lot of people right. who don't have that budget, and somehow they are making it through. Yeah. Of course, you do have. I wish I, we wish we had. Right? Can you imagine, honey, a hundred thousand dollars just in budget? <laughs> oh my goodness! We'll be millionaires. <laughs> oh, I want. I want. I deserve. I want it, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. You can visualize it. Go right ahead. <laughs> oh, I've done it. I, I've been visualizing it forever. Guys, we are heading towards the end of our show. And But before we do that, Myrna, what are your final considerations for the people who are listening to us and they want to learn how to use the winds of storm to elevate them higher? Okay, awesome. Excellent question. What I prepared is five things that gods want you to do if you feel like you're sinking in the storm. And the first one is keep your eyes on Jesus and stay focused. Everybody remembers, you know, the Christians. On the, on the, you remember um, the Bible story about um, when um, the disciples were going through the storm and Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and he looked on Jesus and he said, Master, can I come to you? And he, Jesus said, come. And he started to walk in the water. And then he got fearful of the winds of the storm, and he started to sink. So the yeah. whole, the whole um, lesson in that story is that if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, you're not going to sink. Keep your eyes focused on what you believe that Jesus wants for you to do, <clears throat> what you believe is your purpose, <clears throat> and you will not sink. So that's the first thing. The second thing is do not be fearful, right? Again, um, Peter started to sink when he became fearful. And a lot of us, you know, we're using the storm here. You know, we, the reason I chose the storm is because we can remember the storm. You know, people, I'm not sure if Brazil got any wind, but, you know, Miami, which is where we're playing this radio um, station, um, they went through a storm. We went to Irma. You know, you know, people in Houston, you know, went through Harvey. So, but we're not really talking about the windstorm and the flood. We can use the storm. We just, right. uh, we just right. had, but this is interesting, Marta, mm-hmm. because we just have a lot of wind yesterday in the south of Brazil. Oh, really? And a lot of flooding. You're a kidding. A lot of people lost, who lost their houses yesterday here. Oh, you're kidding. I'm so sorry. Wow. I didn't know you guys were in that zone. Wow. Well, I'm so yeah. sorry. Well, yeah, you're right. So we can all remember what those kind of storms, but the storms that I'm talking about is sickness, fearful that your marriage will end, fearful for your children, fearful that you will not be able to have enough money to pay your bills, you know, fear in general. Fear is the storm. And what you've got, I mean, you know, I mean, the storm can make you become fearful or any challenges, but Fear is one of the worst things that you can be. You have to have hope. And when you, when you have fear, like I said, you're going to be like that crow that's just pecking on the ground. You've got to become like the evil eagle and find some way to have hope and to soar about, uh, above the fear, right? And faith. Yes. Faith is the currency that God uses to help you to achieve your purpose. If you don't believe you cannot receive, you know, I made that up, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, like that. I know, I just thought of it, I thought of rhyme so in let, here. Let, let me become, so number one, number one, keep your eyes on Jesus and right. stay focused, number right. two, do not be fear or be positive, keep yourself right. positive, what's right. number three? Number three is don't let go of your faith, you know, faith okay. is the currency in the spiritual world, 
if you're going to pray and you're going to ask for things and you're going to say that you're going to become a millionaire, you have to have faith, right? And if you don't have faith, it's never going to happen. There's several instances in the Bible that Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. It is the currency that, you, you know, in the spiritual world. It's like, you know, we are now talking on, if we're going to use an analogy, we're talking over the telephone lines, right? You can't hear me and I can't hear you if the, if the, if the, if the sound is not demodulated and then modulated. So faith is that currency. You can't get to God if you don't have faith. So just think about it. He's not going to hear yes. you if you don't have faith. So faith is the currency. And on the flip side of that is don't doubt, right? Um, you, you, you just need faith that the right person is Jesus, and you don't doubt that you're going to ever get there. Like you said, you're going to be a millionaire. You don't doubt it, right? You believe in yourself. You believe in your purpose. You believe that God is going to keep you alive until you... I don't even, I don't even worry that much. Sometimes <laughs> yes. I think I should worry a little bit more. I, no. I am so confident about yep. that. And what is number four, Marna? Number four is don't doubt, right? Right. So don't doubt. And then number five is praise God. You know, praise is a very powerful weapon, right? And on the flip side of that, if, you know, we're listening, if people are listening that, you know, don't go to church and don't know what praise and worship is, the flip side of that is gratitude. When you wake up in the morning, just be grateful that you have breath. Just be grateful that maybe your kids are doing well. Just be grateful that you have a home to live in or, 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 or whatever it is that you can find gratitude for. You can hear, you can see, you can walk. You know what I mean? You're in your right mind. But you praise and you have gratitude because it confuses the enemy, right? So the enemy is going to want to know, why are you praising God and you're in a storm, right? No, but you've got to keep praising because you know that. God is going to see you through the storm. So those are my five things. <laughs> I love it. So let's, let, let's say it again. So number one, keep your eyes on Jesus and stay focused. Number two, do not be fearful. Keep yourself positive. Number three, don't let go of your faith. Number four, do not doubt. And number five, praise God. Yes. Or be, uh, in other words, be thankful. Be thankful. Say thanks every yes. day and be yes. able to look at the positive. Yes. Marna, honey, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure for me to have you in my show. Well, and I, I, hope I I can have you back here. <laughs> I, Dan, thank you so much for all the work you do. I know you you work very hard. I I think it's a great thing that when we have purpose in our lives, that our purpose is not for ourselves. Our purpose is to reach other people and to help them to achieve their purpose and their goals in life. So. I am I'm glad that we're connected, and thank you for being on the show to uh, help me, you know, the two of us, you know, uh, maybe change someone's life that is listening. So thanks again, and um, we'll keep in touch. And I want to say namaste thank to you, I want to say namaste to everyone that's um, listening. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. And I'm going to, it's a pleasure to have you here. And you're going to be back very soon. <laughs> I'm very, I feel very blessed for being in Brazil for my tour it's been amazing. It's just the beginning. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening to us. This is Dan Wilms live from Brazil to our studios at PositiveStreamerRadio.com in Miami.